This week we're starting on Terry McMillan's Top Fuel Dragster. We're going to try and get this thing ready to get racing again this year. Terry's got some things. He feels like he's pretty close on it. So we're going to start working on this thing in hopes that we see some money so we can finish this project out. Now, we're going to try and make it to Indy, but I don't know if the funding's going to be there, but we're going to try and get the car ready anyway. And there's some updates that we need to do to it to get it out for the season. Basically, the old car's just been sitting here, just kind of lost in time. Ready to get out there and hit a thousand foot track and go and kick some ass, but you know what? It takes a lot of money to get these things out there. So just to survive, you know, paying the shop rent, the truck and trailer, those kinds of things, that right there is just survival mode. So now what we're going to do, we're going to get this thing ready. So this thing hasn't ran this year at all. Matter of fact, after St. Louis of last year, she got parked and the team got let go just after the first of the year. But we all found them jobs and they're out there having fun and we're back here just staring at some pipe. So what we're gonna do, we're going to remove this K-member because it's not legal anymore. We're gonna put the X braces in like what we've done on the other two cars that I front halved here just last month. Get that all up to date. These here can stay this year, but next year they have to go. And matter of fact, this whole front end has to go. And the reason why is because it's 058. Currently, most people run 049. The new spec is 065. So you got to chop this thing off and got to put a new front end on it after this year. So I'm not going to put the management stuff back in just yet until I get these cross braces in first. That there is the lower bar. We call that the Leah bar. That's the bar that was put in place after Leah's car folded up and uh, broke in St. Louis last year. So anyway, that's what we're going to plan on doing on the chassis aspect of this. And... We're going to start doing the video on that here coming to shortly. But the next thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about this management tray. Remember this? I was trying to finish this management tray. We're going to clean it all up, get it organized. I'm going to let you guys know exactly what's going on inside this thing. But this is the mess of wires so far that I've taken out of this thing. Yeah, right? That's quite a bit. And the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to talk about the clutch management system. Had a lot of comments, people wanting to know how it works. And so what I've been doing here is rebuilding and going through this clutch management. So as I do it, I'm going to explain to you kind of what it does. Now, this controller right here is nothing but a bunch of valves. And what it does is control fluid moving back to the accumulator from the cannon itself. So it's just a, basically a big hydraulic piston that's controlling all the fingers that are on the clutch. Now, this part over here is the electrical part where these solenoids are turned on. Now, we used to have to run this all by air, but they eventually let us have the electric ability to turn these things on and off. So real quickly, again, I'm going to explain to you, you know, what the cannon is. And basically, it's a hydraulic cylinder. And this here is the actual bearing that is holding back all of those fingers. Now, let me flip this damn thing over so you're looking at it right. So this is the part that's going to be facing the clutch fingers. And this piston comes out. And this thing here is called a snoozle, which is basically a throwout bearing that's holding back those 12 secondary levers. And what it does is slowly goes back in and it releases those levers as it's going down the track, applying more clutch as it goes down the track. Now this here is a Bonifani clutch. This came out of uh, Buzz's 69 Chevy 2 you guys saw that I do. And it basically has six primary levers on it. Those are the levers that it leaves the starting line with, and it has 12 additional levers all set at different heights, so they're released individually as it's going down the track. So each lever that it sees, it just applies more pressure on that because it's a centrifugal driven clutch, and that's how it gets its load. And with wear, too. So it gets kind of complicated in that aspect, but you can see here. Now, this is a clutch that we ran three times in Buzz's car. This is why you don't do it. Look how much surface area is not being used on this last run. Only half of the surface area on this flywheel was even being used. So basically it's like taking a handful of nuts off the primary when you're going to leave the starting line. And we'll take a look at some discs. Now, one of the runs, it actually had one disc that was in backwards. And when I say backwards, these rivets right here are turned towards the flywheel when they're supposed to be the opposite way. You can actually see where these rivets rubbed on the actual bolts that hold the flywheel onto the crankshaft. Now, here is the three-run uh, disc set that came out of it. And let me tell you what, it was way harder on this thing than I thought. I mean, you can even see where it's chunked some of the disc. 
Now, in this application, we thought we could probably get away with it, but it looks like we're going to be down to two runs, not three runs, before having to service the entire clutch on this thing. And that is a factor of just horsepower. So you can kind of see here now, I've got that disc out and how much of that material came off of it. You can see it actually made a run, you know, without that material. So it came off probably the run before. You know, all of this stuff is a factor of the more horsepower you make, the harder it is on all your clutch components. Now, this one particular run, this is kind of what the disc should look like. But what happens is, if it gets hot enough, what can happen, it can transfer material from the disc to the floater. Now, you can see here on this floater that I'm grabbing here, it actually has some shit that is stuck to it. And so when you're adjusting this clutch in between runs, you know, we want a certain uh, pack clearance and we're adjusting these stands to get that. Well, it's not real easy to be able to get that feel for it when you have all this crap on there and it's not a clean surface that's on these things. So that's why it's important. Top fuel machines replace this stuff every run to be as consistent as they can. Now, when we get down to the three and 4,000 horsepower deal, you know, it looks like we're gonna probably start having to service this thing every other. Now, the last time that we ran this car, this was one of the runs. I'll let you guys listen to this little thing. She's pretty stout, she's cool. And this is the first time that this car actually ran over 260 miles an hour. It was, uh, it was, it was like one in the national event, you know, we were up there in Martin, Michigan. But I'll let you guys listen in on this. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hope you enjoy the content. And stay tuned this week. We'll be loading some stuff up on you.